Okay, so this is a 1994 Jayco EL or Jayco Eagle 294 FL. It's 28 feet long. Comes with a Ford 460 and an E40D transmission. And it has approximately 40,000 miles on it. Guess I'll start with the worst, which is the separation of this vinyl. I hypothesize what happened was the um, when the owners put um, standard pressure into the unit, like a, a standard hose pressure without a pressure regulator, there's a regulator here now, or a reducer rather, but they put uh, the city connection without a regulator and the toilet is located there and when the toilet would leak water it would drip water right here and I think eventually over time causes to separate so if you put too much pressure into the unit it does leak water back there but there is no water leakage from outside in at least that I can feel um, this is probably the the worst spot of the whole RV um, my plan was to eventually just keep it taped up or put some filler in it, but it's never bothered me enough to not want to use it or not need it. Uh, probably the next item here is there is a seal out on top of this window here. This whole window needs to be removed out. There's a frame on the inside. It just needs to be pulled out and you can put a, a tape seal all the way across the window. And that should fix what's causing this water damage here that's probably the two most concerning items on the RV let's see if I can't open this up because it is so hot inside there um, let's see over here we got brand new speakers in, the, in here and a brand new Bluetooth speak, uh, stereo brand new speakers over there CB radio uh, one thing I did mention to some people is that the odometer has been changed out. It's not the original odometer, so it doesn't say 40K on it. It says... three fifty eight seven seven two, but that's not the true mileage. Here's the original odometer. It has about 38,000 miles on it. Whenever we started, when we purchased it and started fixing it up, one of these capacitors went out. And actually, I think it was this guy. It was this guy right here that went out and it caused a, a speed feedback problem to the transmission. The transmission would not shift out of, out of fourth or out of second gear, it would go first, second. And stay in second gear so this is a pretty common problem um, so we bought a rebuilt unit off of eBay uh, there's a guy on eBay who that, that's what he does he buys and rebuilds these speedometers and and basically sells them so that's why the mileage is different I can guarantee you that if you were to plug this back in it would say 38,000 miles on it we put about 2,000 miles on it in the two plus years we've had it um, Let's see. All of this is new wood and has been freshly rebuilt. All this stuff here. Uh, painted all of this. I put new vinyl uh, stick on tile, but it's not sticking very well. If, uh, if I was anyone else, I'd probably want to replace it. It isn't completely done all the way. I didn't have time. I have some leftover spots here and here, but I do have some, some vinyl ready to go here to finish that project um, let's see got a new whirlpool um, new whirlpool uh, refrigerator new temp gauge 109 degrees in here here's the bathroom standard bathroom water this needs to be completed the wired up this is a brand new um, a brand new cover and, and motor and everything. I just have to wire this in and put the cover on, but I haven't had time to do that yet. All the lights should work. 
turn the main 12 volt switch on. You gotta turn this here, the master switch on to get lights on in here, which it's completely dead. So we'll need to be plugged back into shore power to start charging up. Here's the master. It's fairly tiny. Some stereo speakers up there. I think it's a full size bed. Oh, storage in here. Underneath is some more additional storage, and that's where I have all of the um, the new vents and the the covers that are supposed to cover up all the wiring. I haven't had a chance to complete that portion yet. This uh, this shade is dis disconnected, so it doesn't really. It just kind of flops. About the master bedroom. Here's the master shower. This locks into place. The shower does have cracks here and here. I put this uh, rubbery style tape on there and it, and it sealed fine. Uh, when I do take a shower, I have no issues uh, with it leaking down here or anything. I was in the middle of replacing this piece of wood that was here. I have the original at home. I uh, just, again, haven't had time to do it and before deciding to sell it. Um, yeah, but that's it. That's, about, that's the shower. Here's the kitchen. Sink runs fine. Microwave works fine. All of the, the heater for the water and the pump uh, and the generator starter all work. I have the stove range set up to run off of a standard gas line so you can buy your own propane and this is what I usually do is I connect this way into a regular old propane that you buy at Kroger at the store and I cook that with that versus getting the tank inside there filled up. This is a bed here and seats. This seats, uh, I believe, legally three people. I think there's three sets of seat belts. This comes out, makes a bed. These captain's chairs do swivel. Uh, you can rotate them 360 degrees, both of these. Uh, this also turns into a bed. This comes down. That's a sleeping area for two others for a total of six you could probably get more in if you, uh, more kids, if you tried. Let's see. This pops out for, as additional breakfast table. And same with this one. But this one has a broken leg, support leg. But it's there. So there's that breakfast table, that one as well, sleeping area up there. And whenever this thing is connected to uh, shore power, all the lights work. Um, and typically, whenever the the 12 volt switch master is on, it works fine. It's not at the moment, but it could use a little clean. Used to be a TV up here, ins inside of here. We mounted a flat screen there at one point. More storage. And yeah. I think that is all about everything inside here. We will go ahead and try to start her up. She hasn't been started in about uh, 
about a week or so. Here's the engine. This battery has uh, been replaced uh, about a year ago, and I just charged it uh, about a week or two ago. This battery, oh, this is why it's not working. I haven't connected the, uh, the house battery back up, but I did recharge it. Once I connect that, I'll take care of that before we send you off. Um, the air condition port, there's a slight air condition leak for the 134A. I usually fill this up once a year and the air condition works fine. Uh, whenever I got to the engine several years back, the truck had been sitting for about seven years. And uh, what happened was the EGR pump had frozen. So I uh, took the whole front serpentine belt system apart. Uh, I rebuilt the EGR system and then, well I didn't rebuild it, but I actually just uh, cleaned it off really and put a new belt on it and it started right up and it's been running flawlessly since. I changed the oil in the filter. It's got about 2,000 miles on it, on the oil and, and filter. Uh, the transmission fluid I topped up. And then immediately, I got, after I got it running, I tried to drive it. Uh, and I couldn't get out of second gear. So I drove it to uh, my, my stepdad's house in second gear before I get the speedometer changed. And then once we did that, we got that changed and found that the brakes were sticking um, on both sides, the front and uh, left and right. So we replaced the brake cylinder, master cylinder, here. So this is brand new. I put a brand new uh, caliper and hose on it. I left the original pads and the original rotors. And then I re-greased the bearings on both sides. This one as well. Uh, got this new caliper, new uh, hose, and then we went or we went camping. Uh, I did try to replace the rear speed sensor that's above the pumpkin. Over there, can't see it here, but I did replace it just try to get the ABS light out. Uh, there was no help with that, but the ABS light may be a wheel speed sensor in the front. It's a possibility. The only thing that happens is you cannot turn on the cruise control but it dries fine shifts fine and brakes fine um let's see what else have i done i repainted the grill i put brand new headlights on it i painted the lower grill and i put all new trailer lights up on top those are all led this one might as well show those The motor transmission run very, very, very strong. I do have the original wheel covers uh, put away at the moment. I, my intention was to paint all the wheels black and get rid of the wheel covers, but they're there. Um, I recently checked all the tires and they all hold pressure with the exception of these two. These are the last two tires that have not been replaced within the past two years. The outside tire held pressure fine. It was the inside tire that had about a 30 PSI drop over six months. So these are the two that I'm next worried about uh, in terms of blowouts. But I was just gonna keep running them and I have a brand new spare on the back waiting for that to go. I also have uh, an eight ton bottle jack that will go with it a breaker bar and some jacks so that if you do get a flat you can swap the tires out uh, it's become a little too much for myself at the moment since i have a muscle condition lifting this heavy rv up is going to become quite a chore the generator here it's own in it's got uh i've heard it run 
it did run initially when we first had it, but we've, we've always used shore power. Um, eventually the fuel pump went out, which is located back here. So it needs a, a fuel pump, which I have a new one here, just needs to be installed uh, properly at least. I was trying to troubleshoot it with this and just running this line to an to a, a external gas tank. But the reality is this whole system needs to come out. The, the fuel pump needs to be installed and a whole new carburetor needs to be installed or if you've got the patience you can take it apart clean it and put it back together and it should run no problem it will run the air condition and it will run the um the microwave at the same time it has no issues there i've seen it done i just never really needed to use it i've always used shore power What else? There's an auxiliary shower out here. This is your City Connect water. Here's your power cable that you just plug into your 220 or or into your 120, 20 amp, 50 amp receptacle. It gets about 13 miles a gallon, maybe 12, depending on how you drive it. Uh, if you go 55 miles an hour, it seems to go get decent mileage, but Let's face it, it's an RV. They just suck gas down. Let's see. The top is still pretty good. I have had no leaks whatsoever inside that I've seen. The engine still runs smooth and quiet. lights once I put the 12 volt switch on. Yeah, let's see. Try to drive it, move it around a little bit. Goes into gear fine. Going up a little bit of a hill but no issues there. It's got an old CB radio. Still works. Um, let's see, I'm trying to see if I forgot any details about this. Yep, so the pump kicks on, you can hear it. That's uh, the pump for the water pressure. So we got no issues there. Um, water heater. Although the LED doesn't work, it does work. Just for the, the light there. This is to check the levels. I've always left uh, left the RV on these mats to sort of save the tires some, keep them off the grass, keep them out of the mud. But yeah, that is about it. It goes 75 miles an hour, no issue. Although I try to keep it at 65. It doesn't overheat. It, the engine stays cool. And charge is good still. Oil pressure is good. Um, see, it does come with a privacy shade that kind of sticks along here to cover all the stuff in your camp spot. I believe it's back here behind the seat. I'm gonna fix a bunch of little things like the door handles being loose. The dash actually cleans up really nice, you know, whenever it's given some attention. This RV definitely needs some love and it has needs some uh, a good washing. It's been sitting for six months. Let's 
see each of the storage compartments is for the most part empty they just have got uh, the basic tools needed uh, for swapping the tire out uh, one thing I do need to mention is whenever I did have a blowout is this gray water tank did get hit and destroyed and what I did was I put uh, a you can see it has kind of leaked through there but this just needs all new uh, fiberglass if, if you were to splatter some more fiberglass on there I'm sure this would not leak anymore uh, but whenever I have it hooked up to the uh, to the uh, have it hooked to the city or to the the sewer line, it flows fine and doesn't leak very much at all in the campground. Hopefully that'll give you a good idea what she is. I don't think she's complete junk. She does have uh, some spots that need some work, but especially this, this is probably the most concerning portion of the whole RV is this warping. And like I said, I think it was the toilet that caused that. So I think oh, if we just sealed this up, you would get a little bit of time. It's definitely a... Uh, not pretty but it, it uh it's never really bothered me that much to be completely frank yeah there you go